Hi there, everybody. I'm Tim Hodge. And I'm Mary Blaine. <laughs> <laughs> I got water down I'm my Mary nose. Blaine. So you guys are familiar with the last uh, video series that Tim did on how to draw cartoon animals. Well, it was so successful and we got really excited. We brought Tim back and we're doing how to draw cartoon people. Imagine that. In this course, I'm going to take you through several steps to learn the basics of drawing cartoon people. We're going to learn drawing faces and how to draw expressions. We're going to look at drawing the whole body and different body types and posing a body and making action poses. And we're going to look at how to draw clothing and wrinkles and, and, um, and how to do caricature, how to get a likeness with a, with a drawing as well. So I know you're going to have a great time. Uh, I know I did, and I can't wait for you to get started on it. Thanks a lot, and we'll talk to you later. All right, let's do one more. We're gonna do this one in color. And instead of doing a historical figure, I'm gonna do someone, one of my favorite singers from the entertainment field. All right. We're gonna work on Tina Turner. She's gonna have a big action pose because she is just incredibly energetic. And I'm gonna draw her from her days in the 80s. That's still my biggest memories of her. She is always full of energy. And I've turned my paper, you may have noticed, I've turned my painter to painter. I've turned my paper to be vertical because I just wanted to use a lot more room to capture all of her movement. The thing about Tina Turner, especially in the 80s, she had big hair. And that, that hairdo was almost another character. <laughs> it was a signature look for her. And she has extremely long legs, so I'm going to emphasize that. Sure, I'm staying in the camera too. There. Okay, and have her holding a mic stand over here right there. How straight can I make that line? I might have to get some sort of ruler or straight edge later. Okay. She's wearing this a denim jacket. Having it open really wide, that kind of helps show all the movement she's creating. Even though she's standing still on the stage, she, if I use her clothing to show just how much how much she's moving around. Right now, her jacket's kind of even on side to side, and I want to get a tilt to that. Now, her hips are tilted this way with the right side up, so I'm going to bring the jacket a little opposite, let it be lower on the right side. That's higher over here. And maybe have the back of it curve the other way too, yeah. There. Like I said, our hips are angled up higher on our left. So I'm gonna do our shoulders a little higher on the right. 
Uh, no, I'll keep the shoulders low on the right, but her head will be tilted this way. So, there we go. And over here, we've got one hand in a tight grip. Now I want to draw an open hand again, just so everybody gets the practice. So this hand is going to be... Our palm is going to be fully open like that. Uh, foreshortened four shortened, uh, forearm. There. And I'm going to have her head tilted way back. Like that. So that line across her face is going to be curved up like that. She's going to be singing with all her might, her eyes tightly closed. And that woman's got a big voice. Again, she had really red lipstick, if I recall, in the 80s. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> make sure I remember when I, we color her in to save that lipstick. Not draw lines around her lips, but to put on a very bold lipstick here. Now this is the fun part. Her hair, especially in the 80s, it went everywhere. And it was big. She had kind of these, not really bangs, but sort of. But they came down over her forehead, and then everything else went up. Which big hair was, I was going to big hair was huge. Big hair was very popular in the 80s. heel shoes, make her long legs look even longer. get this mic stand in place. Yeah, you know, my line was pretty close. When you use a ruler to draw a straight line, it's fine. Everybody needs that. But then when you're doing cleanup, don't use the ruler. And that way your line still has some organicness to it. It feels a little more natural, but you'll have a straight guideline to work from. It takes some practice to make it look right, but if the only line in your artwork that straight is drawn with a ruler, it looks really out of place. What I'm going to do to transfer this, draw, this drawing onto my watercolor paper, uh, since I'm going to be using the, the hot press that's on a watercolor block and I can't put it on a light table to trace it, what I'm going to do is old method of transfer where you just put lay down a lot of graphite on the back side of your drawing And then you, when you clean it up, it transfers the line, the these graphite bits of graphite onto your drawing, your painting surface. It's in effect creating a, creating carbon paper, if you remember what that is. I don't know if 
people still use that so much. Is that all there? I've got all the right places. Make sure all my drawing has graphite on the back. And that is the upside of having a very soft pencil like this because the graphite rubs off easily enough. Now, when I put my paper underneath it, because it's too thick, like I said, to put on a light table to see through it. There. As long as I don't, and I have to make sure not to move the paper underneath around or else my lines will end up in the different places. Now I go back and do my cleanup. Over this. See, even from that little bit, as I'm cleaning up, I'm getting the drawing on my surface. Lightly enough, I can still ink over it. And again, watch the, as I see those fingers, I'm not making them even. This blousy sleeve of the jean jacket. That turned up collar. Then there's that little bolt in the middle of the mic stand where you tighten it up so you can raise or lower it. This is an extra tall mic stand because she's so tall. trying to make her legs very uh, nice smooth lines and give them their own kind of a calligraphy rhythm in the line so they they look like they're moving too nice some fluid shapes getting these calves down the little teeny tiny ankles because it makes her legs even look that much taller. has long fingernails too. I forgot about that. I'll just suggest those now when I clean it up. I'll make sure I have that. How's that? Well, I'm not going to move my paper yet because that might not lay it down in the same spot. Sometimes uh, I didn't have any tape handy. It's a, often a good idea to tape your if you're doing this transfer method to tape your drawing to the paper you're transferring to, that way you do, it doesn't shift around. But tape it lightly. Use like removable tape, drafting tape, painter's tape. That way if it gets on the surface of your painting paper, it's not going to rip it up.
Tina Turner sang a song in a movie I worked on. And Brother Bear. I hear him just showing the underneath side of her jawline because her head is tilted back. It's an awkward angle to draw. But if you can nail it. Here, I'm going to get that collar turned up better. There we go. It's a difficult angle, but it, it's a... When you do it right, it feels really good. Like, ah, oh, I made it. I drew something hard. There. Uh, I have to fix that collar. I, drew, I, knew, I didn't tie that down as much as I should have in blue line. need to make sure that's even. I'm not sure she had big shoulder pads. Shoulder pads are also very popular in women's clothing in the, in the 80s. Now, I know I've always said to think of hair as one big unit, not individual strands. And that is still my method here. I'm thinking of it as one giant shape. I'm just defining the outer edge of it with a very shaggy line. And that's going to be really fun to paint. There. There's Tina Turner, Turner singing her heart out. There. So now I've got a very rough and faint line on my watercolor paper. It's like magic. All right, I'm go also going to ink this with my brush pen. I like the dynamic line it offers, and I think it will add a lot of energy to her pose. Trying not to get too technical with the mechanics of this microphone. I don't want to spend so much time making sure it's accurate that it detracts our attention from Tina. So it's going to be a kind of a stylized microphone. The way the clip attaches to it and all. Get her thumb in here and her sculpted fingernails. There. Her hand tightly gripping that. Make sure I get her arm. You know what I didn't do is I didn't put any bracelets on her and uh, but so she's gonna have to be wearing black bracelets because I can't paint them in over her arm. But I think yeah extra jewelry would be really good here. I'll give her a couple there. Even though I think real bright jewelry was a lot more popular. Especially on stage, you need to stand out. Okay, this is going to be the tricky part, this straight line. I'm going to turn this way because it's easier for me to pull to the side because I do this, my hand starts wavering. So, make sure I can see where I'm going too. There. Very carefully. Bad, says I. And then we'll draw this, the weighted base of the mic stand. And a little line there for the, show the edge of it. There. Okay, now let's get to the, the fun of drawing all this, the wrinkles in this clothing. 
because her, her sleeves are pushed up a little bit and they're baggy sleeves too. So we have a, a lot of wrinkles up here. I'm trying to make these this shape uh, randomized. I won't, don't want the same, like just a simple scallop shape. It's like different pieces of cloth. And make sure we still get that big pallet, uh, um, padded shoulder there. And then all these wrinkles in the, in the crook of her arm. There. It's a bit stylized too. I'm not going for really accurate cloth, but I wanted to just suggest baggy denim and all the wrinkles right there in her, her elbow. And then down here in the, her armpit. Okay, and the collar's turned up there. And as we have said before, I'm trying to start on this side of the drawing and work over so I don't drag my hand through uh, wet ink. Because that's the worst when you get near the end of a drawing. And you accidentally mess something up like that. My rough drawing, I had her eyebrows going down. Now that I'm having more recollection of her, she had her eyebrows up a little bit like she was desperate and singing all her emotions out at once. So I'm turning her eyebrows up just a little bit to capture a little more of her character. It also gives me a little more room to get those, the squints in her eyes as she's closing them so tightly. simple mouth shape and I'm going to put her lipstick on later. Yeah. Open up her mouth a little wider. I can get her bottom teeth in there too. There we go. There she is. shoulder, her neck overlaps her shoulder. Uh, don't go too far to this side. I need to go back and do her hair before I get too far over here. So first I'm going to do her bangs. And this brush pen is just beautiful for creating these. Just lightly touching the surface of the paper. And I did this nice thick and thin. Each line has a wispiness to it. Lots of people had big hair in the 80s. I think Tina Turner did it best. Aha, uh -huh. Flock of Seagulls. Those guys didn't have anything like Tina Turner. Duran Duran. I 
wonder how big we could have made her hair do. We could have like used, had a whole other piece of paper. And <laughs> put two of her fingers together in the middle more or less out of habit you don't really I don't know if she would actually have done that you know holding that a lot of people this is kind of an art uh, standard pose but there's nothing standard about Tina Turner I probably should have separated those fingers for more of a dynamic gesture uh, losing my point just a little bit I'm not drawing a line fully around her hand, around the palm here, because her arm, you know, obviously, is right behind it. Even though it's foreshortened, foreshortened, we just see a little bit of her arm going back into her sleeve there. There, and that's where it connects with her upper arm, which will go up her sleeve. But we're going to be drawing up. Let me do her fingernail over here. these wrinkles just a little bit wider on her hips there. I think it, I like it going from wider down to her narrower, narrower knees. And using this hemline to make sure it curves around the, this way, it looks like it's wrapping around her thighs and also lets us know that her, her, her thighs are going back in space a little, they're tilted toward us, her knees are coming toward us because it adds a, a bit of a contour line there. These are subtle, subtle contour lines. Find them where you can, and it really helps your drawing. It adds dimension and depth, even to a simple drawing like this. Unfortunately, a little bit awkward with her foot behind that stand, but I think I can pull it off. go outlined and ready to be painted Okay, good. Let's add some 
lovely color to this to this uh, wonderful singer. Now, the part of what I wanted to bring out in this caricature is not just a caricature of, of a likeness and her looks, but her actions. I, obviously, her face is very small on this, so I'm caricaturing her movement and her persona. It's bigger than what she looked like. So I'm going to have her on stage, and I'm going to try to get the background kind of dark so that she pops out on it like she's being hit with spotlights. Yeah. I'm going to be using some darker blues, maybe mixing them with some blacks to see how dark we can get it. And that's two reasons I wanted to use this uh, this paper. One is uh, obviously I wanted to try something with a smoother texture this time, but also the um, since it's on the watercolor block, and I knew I was going to be working a little wetter than on the other paintings. I didn't want it to buckle. There are lots of art supplies and materials, and each one helps you create in its own specific way. So try to learn all the properties of everything you want to work with so you can figure out what's going to be best for every piece of art you create. Now I have a limited number of, of uh, mediums I like to paint with. I want to know how each of them works so I can choose the best one for any piece. Yeah. I'm just going to kind of keep this is like almost a dark spotlight behind her. I'm not going to paint the whole page. That might be a fun effect. Just keep a dark circle of color around her. And again, I'm mixing some ultramarine blue and phthalo blue with a little bit of black too, trying to get this really dark color, very rich and vibrant. I'm kind of going, trying to get two opposing features. I want something that's vibrant but also dark. I just don't want it to, to be just a dead black color. I want it to have some some character to it. And if it's too bright, you know, since it's blue, our blue jacket's not going to pop very well against it. So I have to make it dark and a little bit dull with the black. So I'm trying to strike a balance. Vibrant and dull at the same time. It's impossible, you say. These little lines are here. Kind of a sense of motion and sound all together. Try that a bit before we move on. Okay. Now for her jean jacket, 
kind of an acid washed. I'm using a, a cobalt blue. Maybe, yeah, that'll work. But I wanted it a different shade of blue as possible to the what's in the background. I'm also going to leave it rimlet um, because I wanted to feel like not only does it uh, um, that kind of stage looking where the lights come from behind and, and give a nice rimlet look to the the character the, to the actors uh, and the performers. I also wanted to make sure it pops out against and having that nice little white line against the dark background is going to help. So I'm going to. Now there are limitations to using watercolor because I know I talked about how it's transparent and also I'm working fairly quickly and that's spending a long you know, hours and hours on the painting but little things like sh I'm sure this would be more accurate if I made you know, put a bunch of sparkles and bejewels all over her jacket but that requires a lot of different technique and some opaque paints. I'll see what I can do. Cause I just, cause I think some sparkles would look nice. darker and go through the center of it here. darker inside her jacket. There. I like the uneven texture it's drying there. It has a nice, there'll be a nice contrast to her dress when we get to that part. up some raw umber in here with our, along with the burnt sienna to get some nice skin tone for her. Uh, yeah, that's going to work just fine. I'm going to paint her lips with a dark enough red that I can paint over this this uh, color, the paint, uh, skin color, just so, and it won't. It'll, uh, it won't mix too much there. the sepia in here. Warm that color up a little bit. There we go. I'm going 
got a little blue on her in her fingers here, but if I very carefully rub it with the end of the brush, it loosens up the blue paint. And I can wash it away. You can find ways to make the finickiest watercolor forgivable. little bit of bleed on her neck there with her the blue came through. I can use that to my advantage. I need to darken her neck anyway just for a shadow. There we go. Okay, well that's all drying in the middle. I'm going to paint this mic stand. Hit it with some gray, some black. Lots of shiny spots on it, too. Okay, I'm going to start in with her dress here. We just have a bright red dress. Even though most of the reference I found, she was wearing a black dress and it was sequined and I uh, it'll be easier to paint red <laughs> and plus it's very dynamic and sparkly and we'll try to put some sparkles on it too wet. I'm just going to darken the core of this. And what I'm trying to do is keep everything in the middle dark and everything on the edge lighter to mimic some of the stage lighting. This isn't natural lighting like we've been doing on everybody else where they're um, you know, they're standing like in a room or just or outside. This is rather, uh, this is for performance, this dramatic stage lighting. Yeah, 
have her fingernails painted while I'm here. And her shoes. While we're here, I'm going to paint her lipstick. I often save details like this for the very last because they're so fine, but I know I was gonna, my hand was going to be where her hair is. Like that, let's, I don't want to mess that up with my hand while I'm painting her lips. Oh yeah, there it is already. That's already looking like her. jacket. I want to add some sparkles. With some, I'm going to use a, a white pen. But to make sure they showed up, I'm going to add some of those little dark spots too. We'll put like little white dots in the middle of this. Just some randomized spots for texture. And when you hit those little white white dots in the middle, they're gonna look really cool. I'm trying not to put them too close together, just randomize their location so that some are close, some are scattered around, different sizes. jacket a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing on her dress, so we're going to give it kind of a sequined look. And I'm going to get some of this rose matter I had from the... I used on the cape of the superhero guy. And again, we're just going to add a little little touches here now this paints a little bit wet and it's creating a cool little uh, it's randomizing the shape just a little bit more making them bleed out it's kind of cool looking Sharpen some of those up in just a minute here. do this sometimes when I'm painting scales on mermaid tails I just do a few little darker scale shapes like this of similar technique okay well that's all drawing before we pull out the white pen let's start on the magic of her hair I'm gonna lay down some 
a nice base color here, and I'm going to put details in with, with colored pencil. I think it will be a better effect. Uh, get the closest color I can to... <laughs> hmm. How am I going to manage this? a light color through the whole thing. And then let it get darker in the center and kind of glow around the edges. Because the hair was very kind of silvery brown at this time. And when you hit the stage lights, hit it, it just got a little white and glistening around the edge. Looks like a halo. I'm dropping some burnt umber in here, too. Decided I need to darken the area around here a little bit more. Now that I've got her colored in more, it's like it's very evident I need to increase the contrast here. Hitting it a little better. Darken up the inside of her jacket a little there. Yeah. While her hair is drying, <clears throat> I'm going to take a jelly pen. Yeah, that works. And add some sparkles to these dark spots I've painted on her dress.
you wondered what that was all about. Like, I had a method and a plan. Use those dark spots to help this white show up even more. It was more contrast if I could put a dark, a darker spot around it. Now I have used white paint, like gouache or acrylic, to do the same thing. It all serves the same purpose. One isn't better than the other, really. This is a little easier to use because I don't have to wash a brush out, but other than that, it's all pretty much the same. There we go. Trying to keep it stylized and cartoony, not wanting, I didn't want to go too illustrative on it. I did want it to be fun. Okay, now let's finish with a texture on her hair. For this, I'm going to pull out some Prismacolor pencils. And oh my goodness, the myriad of a palette we have. This is 3D. How am I supposed to make up my mind? favorites. There is a lot in here. Yeah. I've chosen a few colors here, a couple different shades of brown, a black, and a very dark blue. And I've got a white, my white pen and a white uh, Prismacolor. And we're going to work on the highlights and the shadows in her hair. And I'm going to start with my darkest first. Now these are, that, that's still really wet. He's going to tear up the paper if I draw on that. There. Made sure that surface is really good and dry, because if I use Prismacolor pencils on that, it's going to really tear it up. So I'm going to start off with my darkest color first. Prismacolor pe uh, pencils work really well over watercolor. It's a great way to add some, some extra texture or, or uh, shading here and there. Or maybe some detail that you just can't quite get with a brush. Prismacolors are the uh, pencils I'm most familiar with. I like them because they are, they, it's a, they are they're kind of waxy. I'm sure there are other brands that would that will work as well. I don't, yeah, Color Ace would probably work well on this too. Try out a few. I, you may even try, um, there's a brand called Aquarelle. They're, um, they're watercolor pencils, but they're water soluble. So you can, um, if you, and that's what I did, the underdrawing. Uh, on Shirley Temple with on the, on the first lesson. But if you uh, if you use that after on, on top of watercolor, you can go back and moisten it with a brush and blend it into your watercolor as well. And that can be that's some fun effects. I'm even adding some blue in here. It helps tie together with the, the rest of the the color.
hope our younger viewers appreciate Tina Turner too. But I can use a lot of different colors in here and get a lot of different texture that way. Like, because very often hair isn't only just one color. You can have two or three colors on a, on a person and or, or also the way light hits hair. Some hair reflects a little different. And you get different colors and shimmers. I'm going to put some highlights on this in just a minute. I'm not going to use the white color, uh, Pisma color though, because sometimes when I try for highlights on top of other Prisma color, it just kind of smears. It doesn't have a defined um, color of its own. So again, I'm going to use my Jelly Roll pen and add some little highlights in here. And you see, I'm, oh, as I'm while I'm coloring this, I'm following the the flow and the the shape of her hair, the, the growth patterns, and the way it's combed out, the way it is. Or blow dried out. I'm not sure how she fixed her hair, honestly. But it allows me to add some other direction to hair inside. It's not just this outer, the outer black line I put in. I can add some other shapes inside. I've got to keep clearing out this pen. It picks up some of the that Prismacolor, is that, it's just a like a ballpoint pen with white ink. But it gets clogged a little bit. There, I think that's about all I can do. I think she looks pretty amazing, if I do say so myself. This is kind of fun. I just found it on the edge here. I can even soften up the edge of her hair with this white pen. Adding some white strands going out into the darkness. Oh, now I'm going to go crazy. There is Tina Turner. If you don't know where she, who she is, go through your parents' record collection. Because she is amazing. All right. Well, I had more fun on that than I thought I was going to. I hope you did, too. Let's sign it. There. There. Well, I hope you guys had a lot of fun with all these lessons. I know I did, and I hope you come back for more, and I will too. See you next time.